In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create beautiful city maps like these for free using Canva. A few weeks ago, I showed you what I believe is the easiest and fastest way to create high quality maps of the entire world. And for the most part, you guys loved it. But that method, even though it produces amazing results, is not without flaws. So in this follow-up video, I want to address the issues that some of you encounter when following those steps and give you the solution to each one. Now, I just wanna take a second to thank you guys for commenting on that video and for sharing some of your experiences creating these maps. It's comments like this that really make this whole YouTube journey worth it. And I also want to thank all of you who took the time to ask questions, provide feedback, and help improve this method even further. This follow-up video is for you, so thank you once again, and now let's get into it. So I'm going to go over the steps real quick, but I'm going to be focusing mostly on how to solve the issues that came up. And by the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to solve the biggest issue of all. So this is a super easy three-step process. The first step is to source the map data from Extract Bike. This is a platform that provides provides geographic information from around the world for free. You just go to the website, search for the location you want to create a map of, then create a bounding box to select the area that you want to download, type in your email and hit extract. This website will then harvest the map data you selected and mail it to you in a couple of minutes. So far, none of you guys have had any problems with this step. If the area you choose is too big, you might get a message like this. But all you need to do then is simply reduce the size of the bounding box a bit and you are set. So now we just go to our email and download the file file they sent us. So step number two is very simple as well. You just need to go to MapShaper. This is a platform that will transform the files you just downloaded into SVGs that you can upload to Canva. So it's basically an intermediate step. All we do here is make these files compatible with Canva. You just need to extract the files you downloaded and then simply drag and drop all the contents of the shape folder into this website. You then go to the right hand side and click on this little map and then go to the center top and choose the layers you want to download. You're most likely going to be downloading the roads layer and maybe the railways. So you can download your layers one by one and you do that by selecting them. They will turn black on the map that confirms the selection. And then you go to the top right hand side again and click on console. You then type this code exactly as it is in the console. As soon as you hit enter you'll be prompted to choose a folder destination for your layer and a name, which by default is the name of the layer. As you can see there's no issues here either. Most of you were able to follow this step easily. However, one of you guys mentioned that when importing the files into MapShaper, they got some weird lines across the map. This viewer reported that when creating a map of Dallas, and so I tried to do it myself and I found the same issue. This is an extremely rare occurrence. I've created hundreds of maps using this method and I never came across this issue until trying to create a map of this specific area. I should say this seems to be a problem with the source data. Some of the polygon data from OpenStreetMap might be broken in this particular place and that's why we get these weird lines. However, I'm confident it is a temporary thing because the source data is updated daily. So so hopefully they'll fix it soon. Now the third step is to customize these maps in Canva, and this is where most of you encounter some issue. You want to first drag and drop the SVGs you exported from MapShaper. Next, you want to change the color of the map by applying a duotone, and finally, you can also change the shape of the map by applying a mask. You then add the text and some coordinates and your map is ready. This is the workflow suggested in the other video. However, there could be a couple of issues here which I'm going to address one by one. First of all, if your SVG layer is larger than 3 megabytes, which it can definitely be if your map is big, then Canva won't let you import it. This is because Canva is mainly an image-based platform, so SVGs are only supported as long as they are small files. The second issue, which happened these past few days, is that Canva seems to have changed their masking settings. So you can't really mask SVGs anymore for some reason. You can still mask PNGs or JPEG images, but not vectors. And the third issue is that when you import multiple layers, you sometimes will find that they are not the same size, and they won't overlay exactly. So let me show you how to solve each one of these problems going backwards. So let's say you import two layers, a roads layer and a railways layer. The reason they might not be the same size is because when you set the bounding box in Extract Bike, your roads might reach all four edges of the bounding box, but the railways might reach only three or even two of those edges. Let's say if they run north to south, for example. So this is the tricky part. The bounding box will export everything in it, but it won't export a blank space. So if your railways are contained within the bounding box, but there's a bunch of nothing to the sides, then the exported railways layer will be a smaller rectangle compared to the one containing the roads. However, the important thing is that regardless of the fact that they might differ in size, their proportions will be the same, meaning you only need to scale one of the layers to make it match the scale of the other. Then you need to overlay them properly and that's it. Now there is a very simple way to accomplish this. If you just go back to MapShaper and turn on your roads and then select your railways, this will make it very easy to see how they overlay. 
way. So just take a screenshot, then import that screenshot into Canva and use it as a backdrop. Then place your layers on top and scale and position them accordingly. So that fixes the overlaying issue. Next, how do we fix the masking issue? Well, that is very simple as well. It appears that you can no longer mask SVGs in Canva. It used to be just as simple as masking any other image, but recently they rolled out some changes that now make it impossible, unfortunately. So the workaround is quite simple. Just upload your SVG file to Canva, make it as big as your poster, and download it as a PNG. Then re-upload your PNG back to Canva, and there you go. Your map is now an image that can easily be masked and customized, same as an SVG. This also solves another problem, which is that if you have multiple layers, you can't just group them and mask them both at the same time. You can only mask one layer at a time. So by exporting your multi-layer map as a PNG, you effectively flatten the map into a single image that you can now easily mask and stylize. Many of you guys have asked about this issue specifically, so there's a solution. It is an extra step, yes, but it takes 5 seconds and it works 100% of the times. And finally, the last remaining issue, what to do if your SVG file is too big, meaning more than 3 megabytes. Well, in that case, the solution once again is very simple, but it requires an extra step. Instead of directly uploading the SVGs you got from MapShaper into Canva, you first need to open them in a vector editing tool like Illustrator or Inkscape, which is 100% free to download and use. So go to Inkscape.org, click on Download Now, choose your operating system, then your processor, and that's it. Install the software and open your SVG file. So all you need to do here is just export it as a PNG. So go to the top menu, into File, Export, and now go to your right-hand side and make sure to change the resolution to 300 dpi. This is very important, otherwise your map is going to look pixelated. Now go to the bottom and make sure PNG format is selected. Click on the settings icon and make sure RGBA 16 is selected. This exports the image with a transparent background just like an SVG. Click export and that's it. Now in Canva, drag and drop the PNG you just created and there you go. You can now mask it like any normal image and you can also apply a duotone edit like you would with an SVG. Now let me show you a very cool trick that I use often. Depending on the size of your map, your lines might look a bit chunky. The more complex the map and the bigger, the bulkier it will look. You can easily fix this in Inkscape. So go to Edit, select All, and now on your right-hand menu once again, go into Fill and Stroke and change the width of the stroke to something like 0.2 or 0.1. This will make the lines in your map look super delicate and much more defined. Then export and upload to Canva and that's it. And last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to solve the biggest problem with these maps. A lot of you guys asked about this in the other video, so I'm happy to finally be able to provide a proper solution. So the problem is that I made a map at Dublin using a clover instead of a shamrock. Now I know what you're thinking, that is completely unacceptable and uh, I agree. So how do we fix that? Well, the issue is that I use one of the standard masks which unfortunately do not include a shamrock, so I just went with a clover. So how can we create a proper map at Dublin like this one in Canva? Well, I'll show you. And by the way, this method works with whatever silhouette you want for your maps. So we're going to be creating a custom shamrock mask. So in Canva, create a new page, go into elements and search for a nice shamrock. We don't want it to be super detailed, we just need the silhouette. So this one will work. Next, make it as big as possible, after all your map has to fit inside the shape. We change the color to black and now we simply download it as a PNG image with a transparent background. That's it. So now, to apply this mask, you want to select your map, go to the left hand side menu into apps and search for clipping mask. Now choose the first one, click on start masking, go into image and upload the shamrock PNG you just exported. Adjust the size until you're happy and click add to design. There we go, we now have a beautiful map of Dublin properly masked as a shamrock. Of course we can now change the color, add some text and some coordinates and we are ready to patch things up with our Irish viewers. Now as a thank you for bringing this to my attention and taking the time to comment on that video, you can now download this map of Dublin for free using the link in the description. This is my gift for you guys, it is a 20 by 30 inch high resolution poster so you can print it anywhere and frame it and hopefully have a nice reminder to catch the next video on this channel. So to recap, the entire thing ends up being a four step flawless process instead of three. Number one, extract the map data from Extract Bike. Number two, transform that data into SVG layers using MapShaper. Number three, convert those SVG layers into PNG images using Inkscape and also change the thickness of the lines if you want to. And finally, number four, customize your map in Canva, mask it, change the colors and add the text. All these maps were created using this exact same method. And as you can see, they look beautiful and super high quality. They make for great gifts, they look amazing on almost every room, and they sell like crazy. So you now have the tools to go start your own map business, or maybe surprise your loved ones with a cool gift to commemorate
commemorate some special occasion, maybe a family trip, or even celebrate the purchase of a new home. I hope you guys enjoyed this follow-up video. Next week, I'm going to be uploading a video on how to create insane topographic maps, since many of you have been asking for that content. So, stay tuned if you're interested. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below. As always, I'll be more than happy to respond to every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.